sorry, the first one's long, so the good news is that it's not 22 episodes in this one as well. This one's actually a little bit cut, but I'm going to try my best to straight up try to get through all of them without stuff like that. Anyways, we got Creature Feature Part 1 and Part 2. They start off Season 2 with this crazy thing, and the weird part was just the fact that it was hard to track down getting to watch this. This was hard to track down. But I got to see it. It was good. It was a classic film lover named John who gets sucked into a 1950s B movie called "I Was a Tick Monster," playing as a, playing at a haunted drive-in. As and he soon ends up in a movie where he pursued he was pursued by a tick monster and an evil scientist named Doctor Mangle. <laughs> And, of course, these guys actually put down below that they have been reused actors. They use reused actors, but, hey, Goosebumps did that, too. I don't think Haunted... I mean, I don't think Nightmare Room got to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of the sad part about... Good news and sad part about, Haunt, I mean, Nightmare Room is that they were so short, they got cut so short within their trying to development that they didn't actually reuse actors. Or, and even if they did, well... Yeah, that's kind of sad on your part. So, Creature Feature 2 is that Nate and Lisa decides to get in there as well to save John. And, well, Dr. Mango <laughs> releasing his creature. So, Dr. Mango decides to try to release the creatures or his creation in the real world. But, in the end, John decided to stay in the movie while Lisa and Nathan decide to leave him and go back to the real world as... John wanted it this way. And the tick monster appeared. John quotes fade into black and the episode ends. But they didn't actually mean. Yeah, they just condensed this. So it turns out that John actually was. They brought back John into the real world. He was turning into a freaking monster. Then they had to bring him back into the movie again. Because he was turning into a freaking tick monster. And they cured him. And he wanted to stay in the movie. The only messed up part, and I'm sorry to say, is like, but, yeah, just like freaking wrong number. It's like, but, <laughs> the freaking parents of the freaking child, they all have to have a right to be like, oh my god, what the fuck? Where's my son? Where's my son? It's like, yeah, and then the sad part would just be like, here's your son, he's in the video, and he's in this old 50s video, and they look and they're like, oh my god! son we gotta get him out of there which is kind of oh wait my hmm did the girl come out with him no no it was him who got transformed well anyways yeah so that's the crazy part about this it's the fact of just like in wrong number but i didn't even talk about wrong number the fact of what about stephanie's family what about them i mean it's not just about you getting bullied it's more of the fact of but then the family doesn't know where Stephanie is. And most likely there's posters saying missing Stephanie. And I mean, how in the frick can you not actually be, which I can see that, yeah, she's just like freaking Julia. But still, it is kind of messed up where you deleted and killed Stephanie. And yet you walk around the freaking neighborhood and you know what you see? Missing Stephanie. Pay whatever reward just bring back our little girl. Yeah, you have John here, but hopefully Nathan and Liz, Lisa right here, tells the parents what happened, even though they might not believe him. Then they show him footage, and it's like, oh, freak. Anyways, next is Swarman Norman. And Swarman Norman is kind of like the... If they had a Say Cheese and Die. Let's say we take Say Cheese and Die and take a picture of Go Eat Worms. Well, in the second one, like in the second book... It reverses and put in a negative. This would be what the negative would be. Is that Swarman Norman got got look like powers over insects, and he decided to put revenge on everyone who ever actually screwed him over and bullied him. But sadly, he stepped on one of the insects, and now they want to have a rebellion with Norman. And he tries to keep the insects out of his room, but forgot about one hole in the wall that the. Uh, insects had taken advantage of they swarm in his room completely covered his body and in the end with a quote of how many outnumber humans and stuff cursing normal scientists oh 
the ending suggests that the insects have started an uprising against all humans. Technically, I should have remembered this part. Awesome ants, which yet again, just like freaking perfect school, Awesome X was ants was actually a part of Choose Your Own Fear, Choose Your Own Goosebumps book, or Give Me Goosebumps or whatever. So that's kind of sad. But yeah, Awesome Ants is kind of like a kindred spirit to Awesome Ants in the end as well. So, Soiree Norman was crazy. And of course, I just saw that Norman came with freaking damn. Yeah, he got overpowered. He actually allowed his ego and actually stepped on one of the insects, which is kind of sad. Anyways, next is Flight, and Flight was crazy. Flight was like the craziest one. So it turns out that in Flight, he was like, I see the Grim Reaper. I see him. <coughs> this is not really a rip off of Sixth Sense because it was just one freaking ghost, and the ghost was trying to stay alive, apparently. And apparently, oh, oh, the, the, the freaking Grim Reaper is in the form of an old lady. So what was going on is just the fact of the ghost couldn't accept himself to being dead. But luckily for, for us, Josh was able to talk him out. And of course, like happens with so many times with ghosts, is that ghost was, this ghost was actually messing with the electricity, messing with the freaking airplane. So that means that the airplane's power was going in and out and crap, and everyone's starting to freak out. But luckily, he convinced this guy, Vincent, a millionaire, to go to the next life. Which he does, and the power's restored, everyone's safe. So, the sad part is that too bad he wasn't able to straight up tell the freaking dude, Hey, can you give me some money? <laughs> it's like, yeah, hey, since I'm your friend and I actually was able to get you to the next life, is there some way, shape, or form you're able actually able to give me some of that money you have in your will? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm... All right, next is the pumpkin head. I would say pumpkin head actually is the craziest one of them all. I would say when it comes to Watch Mojo, and I previously watched that, they did the top 10 Goosebumps episodes, I would say Pumpkinhead could simply easily punch freaking Haunted Mask in the face. He could just straight up push right in the face of Haunted Mask because Pumpkinhead just went up the ante. It just went up the ante. Not only that, but <clears throat> excuse me, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns 2, which I think this is the freaking sweet, cool, younger brother of it. It's like, yeah, freaking Attack of the Giant Lanterns, which is like, oh, that's cool and everything. That's cool. That's a nice twist ending. But then you have Pumpkinhead, who just shows up and is like, what's up, everybody? That's what Pumpkinhead freaking damn did. I swear, if Pumpkinhead was actually a brute, he would be able to beat up freaking Haunted Mask and Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. And Haunted Mask too, Because it even has a sequel. It was so good. They actually had to do a sequel. And this sequel actually told you what happened to the two that happened in this. Well, anyways. So, we got this girl named Allie and her brother David. They also have Scott. Oh, her brother is David and Scott. And they wanted to invest on pumpkin patches that said were... Tended by a murderous farmer named Palmer, who kidnaps children and switched their heads with pumpkins in his garden, which turns them into pumpkin heads. Eventually, you have Ali and Scott becoming pumpkin heads on their capture as the pumpkin Ellie high heads to capture David. So, yeah, Dave. But, anyways, this was a good freaking episode. You have to watch it for yourself. This is one of the ones I would definitely tell you, you got to see this one. Especially on Halloween. Really You has to be one of them, and Pumpkinhead has to be another one. Now I'm like, you have to watch it. Because this one was crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we find out what happens with Dave in the sequel. Which, we don't actually get... We don't actually get, like, true hints of what happened to Dave. Like, you don't see Dave running around or anything. But the person tells the story of what happened to one trick-or-treater last Halloween, a.k.a. Dave. So we get to hear what happens to Dave, but you have to pay attention. If you don't, you'll miss it. 
But anyways, my goodness, yes, pumpkin head, my gosh. But anyways, brushes with madness is the next one. And this one is, oh yeah, this is the one I was thinking about. Brushes with madness technically could be like the distant cousin of the mask mutant. No, attack of the mask mutant. That's what it was called. Yeah, this could actually be like the cousin of it. So this one is a comic book geek named Corey who gets yelled out by his favorite artist, Alan Miller, during a comic book convention by asking too many questions. So he decides to steal his brushes and come up with his own creation only to learn that Alan's brushes have the power to turn fantasy into reality. So technically, this is just like what happened to the blob that ate everyone. I fixed that. And also, Goosebumps the movie, technically. So, yeah, when he and his friend Emma are pursued by a villain called the Mad Artist, in a twist ending, it is determined that Alan was one, the one who was behind the whole thing creating his new comic book, and then he shreds it so that he, will, he won't get a lot of questions about it from his fans, who, which state, states to his bodyguard. Yeah, and also notice that Ellen Miller is actually a mix of Alan Moore and Frank Miller. But anyways, that was just, this one actually was one that was like truly cruel. This is as messed up as the freaking wrong number one. And as for Goosebumps, I don't remember which one was super horrible, but this was very messed up. It was really messed up right here. It really is. Anyways, next is the one called Sick. And this one was interesting. <laughs> this was really, really interesting. And this one's kind of weird, but it does actually make sense because this is kind of like what happens when you actually are sick. Really sick. But anyways, yeah, you have this boy named Alex who is staying from home from school because he is sick. While his mom is out to do errands, he finds out that there is a monster in the house and he has been quarantined. With the help of the TV newsman, he fights the monster. Alex then wakes up to find his mom. She tells, she then tells him that it was all a dream. But in a twist ending, Alex then hears the TV newsman say it was not a dream. And they are keeping him in the house to quarantine him from the monster. To keep it quarantined from the monster. What? Uh, I don't know what happened in this one. But anyways, the episode ends with Eris thing engulf engulfed in a blinding white light. I remember this episode. This episode was quite weird. But this episode does actually speak the truth about being sick. The fact that lots of crap can happen. Like, for me personally, when I got, like, truly sick, I come in and out of dreams. And what's weird is that you have this puzzle dream that just happens for me. That's the weird part is that instead of nightmares and crap like that, when I'm like at my worst, it's basically puzzle dreams trying to tell me crap, but it's being told so fast and mixed together that I have no idea what the hell you're trying to tell to me or what the hell the freaking dream was supposed to be about. Usually. Next is mascot. Now mascot pisses me off. Mascot is one that really pisses me off. Well, anyways, Willie and Drake, two students at Yellow Valley High School, they hate their freaking mascot. Their mascot is weird as frick. Technically, he could actually be a yellow dust bunny. And he performs at basketball games. They decide to elect a new mascot and inform that big yellow, the student in a big yellow costume, he is no longer needed. No one seems to know who the student is. But anyways, they both actually hold auditions for the new mascot and a dancing teen in a wolf costume gets the job. And, yeah, so... <clears throat> Big Yellow freaking riots and protect and tries to freaking audition to save himself. But that night, the student in a wolf costume is attacked by Big Yellow. What the frick? <laughs> and then Will finds the freaking wolf costume head torn into bits in his bed. Determined to find out a true identity of freaking Big Yellow, they start investigating. And then Big Yellow gets is starting to attack the freaking kid. <laughs> and after escaping, he confronts Big Yellow and alone and ripping off the freaking mascot's head. But both the head and the body 
began to move independently, revealing that Big Yellow is not a costume, but an actual freaking damn monster. So, next time, the morning after Drake discovers messages from Willie on his cell phone and goes to the school to investigate, only to find his friend along with Big Yellow missing. At the night's freaking basketball game, though, Big Yellow reappears and Drake calls Will with his cell phone and he hears the cell phone ringing in reply inside of freaking the mascot's stomach. And then as the freaking episode ends, Big Yellow looms over Drake and smiles while Will and the wolf mascot are shown trapped inside the monster, slowly being digested and screaming for help. Now you gotta admit, I have to admit though, now reading it, even though I'm still pissed off about this freaking thing completely. I'd have to admit this actually is very, very good. But still, from seeing it myself, it pisses me off. It really does piss me off. And technically, if you were a freaking big Scooby-Doo fan, you gotta admit that you really wanted to have this weird guy in a costume. And you're like, what the frick are you doing in this costume? Get the frick out. And you're like, I, I, I don't have a home. I'm a homeless man. <laughs> <coughs> feng Shui. So Feng Shui, what happens in this is basically what happens in Feng Shui. Is that basically you have this girl who supposed to be... Oh yeah, and she has a strict freaking mom. This is actually the first time ever. Well, not really. Because yeah, let's get a visible with a Chinese American girl. You also had cry off the cat that might have had a Chinese American girl as well but either way whatever so yeah all this the thing is just basically talking about feng shui and if you don't do feng shui right guess what there's a freaking damn monster <laughs> yeah right there's a freaking damn monster um let me see uh snake demon yes freaking damn snake demon so yeah yay so Nurse node, when it comes to freaking feng shui, if you don't have good feng shui, you're going to get screwed over. And this is also the thing of where freaking Jessica Chang actually learned that you need to know what feng shui is. And also, you cannot deny your freaking heritage because if you don't, a freaking snake demon will try to kill you. <laughs> Isn't that kind of funny? Oh my gosh, I, I bet there's lots of freaking, and this is not, I'm not trying to be racist, I'm just saying something that could be funny. The fact of, when it comes to Asian parents, it's like, if you get bad grades, this snake demon's gonna kill you. And they use this episode <laughs> to freaking scare their kids to be academic scholars. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's horrible. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, you have the hole. And this hole pisses me off too. This hole is technically the cousin of, what was that one? The one in the first season. The one that I talked about that it was the freaking grave and the person getting freaking tripped over and crap. But anyways, yeah, this one is actually its brother. A meaner, well, actually no, not, yeah, it's kind of a meaner brother. But anyways, so you have Rob and Carrie. Their family moves into a new house when strange things starts to happen. They play catch in a freaking backyard and they find out there's a big fat hole. And there's a picture of a family and there's a car and they lose their ball. And then freaking Rob decides to investigate and videotape the hole during the night. And then Rob and Carrie watch the video and they saw a man in with his family telling them that they eat together and later throw a grill at the camera throws a grill at the camera what well anyways they used the car's license plate in the photo to find out that find out find them okay find a man's family died in a car wreck they show their mom but she doesn't believe them all of a sudden all the, the picture breaks with their father's face scratched out the ghost takes their mom and tries to drag her into the hole Rape! 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 <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just had to do that. I just had to do that because that seriously sounds like a rape situation. <laughs> but anyways, so Rob and Carrie saves her, but their dad gets sucked in instead. Damn. Later emerges, and they all have lunch together, and their dad wears the same shirt as the man in, a, in the video. The kids try to leave, but their dad said... Or slash the man said 
They eat as a family, symbolizing the ghost possessed their father. You see why I'm pissed off by this? The fact that the dad freaking fell into the hole, even though he didn't need to do it. He didn't even need to be part of that. He could actually just stand back. Anyways, the freaking damn father of the other one that actually... Yeah, he's the one that actually is the one that deserves to get screwed over, but whatever. <clears throat> now we come to the one... <clears throat> excuse me. That I actually talked about when it came to making a brand new Goosebumps series. A brand new television series on Goosebumps. It's the fact that you have this called the Scarecrow. And this one can kick the Scarecrow walks at midnight in the balls. It can kick it in the balls, pimp slap it a couple of times, then pimp slap it one more, then kick it in the balls and in the gut. But anyways, yeah, you have this young farm girl named Jenny has trouble ridding crows because the crows were eating their crops. So she buys a scarecrow from a mysterious salesman. Jenny soon discovers that the scarecrow is behind a chain of mysterious disappearances. Now here is where I'm talking about the fact of all through all of this, notice the fact that they never in season one or season two had like conflicting interests. But in this one, they had conflicting interests. So this is what happened when the episode came out. <clears throat> Jenny's brother, Bobby, setting fire to Scarecrow during the salesman narration at the end of the about the end of the world and walking away. This is what happened now. They retouched this. <clears throat> Bobby turns into a scarecrow by the salesman and made him watch the world end. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't notice that. And which one did I watch? I think I most likely watched the rerun one. But anyways, yeah, notice the fact of What's weird is, check that out. The freaking first ending was good. But then the second ending took it up the ante and said, screw happy endings. Frick. Frick. Anyways, next you have dream catchers. Dream catchers is the same thing as feng shui. The fact of dream catcher and then, uh, let's see. So Lisa, she was at freaking summer camp. She's nervous, befriends a friend named Amelia, and they make also an enemy. Then the camp legend or mysterious creature called the, uh, oh, dream catcher. Sorry about that. I thought, yeah, they do use a dream catcher too. But anyways, so it feeds on the nightmares, appears to be true after a cabin full of girls have reoccurring nightmares that scares them into insomnia. <clears throat> the dream catcher targets... Lisa, Amanda, and Meg, before Dream can Catcher can attack Lisa, her alarm goes off, saving her and Amelia. Meg is shown still asleep in the mess hall as the Dream Catcher prepares to attack her. Sorry about that. Yeah, I... It's just like what happened before. I was like, Dream Catcher? So that means that thingy? Which I think they did have a Dream Catcher thing, and I kind of forgot what was the purpose of it because well this is a freaking rundown and it's been a long time since i saw the episode but did i talk about the episodes i think i didn't i did i did i did a rundown scarecrow my gosh yeah scarecrow's my gosh dream catcher that was like a wow next up is the interesting one where you have the most evil sorcerer and this one is straight up bull crap at the end I mean, part two is straight up bull crap. But anyways, what happens is this. Is that you have a medieval. This is taking medieval times. And it was under a corruption. A freaking town was under the rule of a corrupted sorcerer named Margolin. Margolin and two teens named Ned and Sarah set out to dethrone the sorcerer. And rid him of his magic where they receive help from. Mangones, whatever, Margolin's apprentice named Grisilda. Yeah, Grisilda. So, yeah, this is part one, and I kind of wished it was just a big fat hour episode because that just needed to happen. I mean, I didn't really feel like I. I mean, it wasn't like that much where I was like, oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I just was like, let's just get done with this. 
because I don't care. Just get done with this. So, anyways, yeah, part two is when Ned and Sarah discovers that the sorceress, Gris Linda, Grisilda, sorry, who helped them dethrone the evil sorcerer, was the one who taught black, him black magic. Ned takes revenge against Grisilda, and Sarah worries that Ned's obsession to, uh, obsession to learn magic may drive him apart, drive them apart. Eventually, G-Girl was tricked by Ned by into smelling sleeping potion that Ned remembered the spell G-Girl was performing when his eyes were taken away and were put into a jar right next to her. Yep, that happened. And had put G-Girl into a deep sleep. Sarah reveals that Ned to Ned that a kiss can break the spell 100 years later. Oh, breaks the spell. Then, 100 years later, G-Girl is still under the sleep of a spell until a hitchhiker came through, came up, thought something was wrong with her, and started to do CPR. G-Girl woke up and shocked the freaking hiker. <laughs> and you see why I hate this? It's just a fact of Mr. Dumbass. This is the real problem with the freaking world to me personally. It's like when there's none of your freaking damn business and yet you butt in. That happens so many times, especially when it comes to girls. It's like girls, a girl is dealing with a dude and then all of a sudden a bunch of dudes want to come in and help her out, which is like, it's not your fight. It is her fight. Let her deal with it. My gosh, it doesn't even have to deal with you. Yeah, so this... This right here is just basically the part of where it's like, dude, yeah, I guess really to save everything would just be the fact of removing her lips with a spell. If you remove her lips with a spell, take that jar and bury it, then most likely nothing could actually happen unless someone's stupid enough to even look for the jar. And then you have some, most likely it has to be a sicko who actually looks at the jar, kisses those lips like, mm, and it's like, my gosh, you're an idiot. But anyways, yeah, the freaking hiker's a dumbass idiot, and that's why I don't like this <laughs> video. I don't like this episode because the freaking hiker is a dumbass idiot, and now you screwed us all over. Or, yeah, you screwed everyone over because now you just released a freaking witch. Which I kind of hope that if there's, like, some kind of news thing that freaking G-Girl, Grisilda, actually says, very special thanks to this hiker dude that I know of named Carl or something. He kissed me and now I get to rule you all. And it would be cool that they're like, yeah, it's Carl Smithson. And Carl Smithson is a big fat bastard and we all hate you. It's like, yeah, I just would like them to get straight up smashed and screwed over by everything, you know? Yeah, just straight up put him through the dirt because he deserves it. Anyway, stage fright is something different. That was hard to watch, too. That was a hard one to actually watch. But anyways, so you have basically the drama club of Hansel and Gretel. And you have, like, a few who keep on forgetting their cues. Well, one girl, definitely. And this play is apparently cursed. And just lots of stuff happens. The drama teacher is the real witch that cursed the play and gets Hansel and Gretel thrown into the fake oven, but the witch isn't her, the actual witch from the story. And she reveals that she cursed the play because she was mad that the story wasn't told properly. So she locks the stage doors and turns off the lights and said she didn't eat Hansel and Gretel. She ate her, their mother and parents. Oh, that was a good twist. That was an awesome twist in Stage Fright. That was an awesome twist. So, that was a good one. We're reaching the end. We're no, we're kind of reaching to the end. Anyways, we got Night of the Mummy and uh, let's see, Night of the Mummy. Rare Egyptian exhibit. Seth takes a job as a museum volunteer. However, the more Seth O oh, and comes across it says connected to the mummy of the boy and da 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 unless his friends Phoebe that for help. It turns out Seth is a long lost twin brother of Seti and decides to be with his brother in the afterlife 
as the courier summons a sandstorm. When Phoebe wakes up, she finds that Seth is now a mummy and he joined his brother in the afterlife. Kind of atoned to what happened with Night... Well, I'm not even a mummy. You know that first mummy book that they made in Goosebumps? That one. This one actually is the kindred spirit of that one. I was okay with that one. You know, I was okay with that. Next is Headshot. Boom, Headshot. Boom, Headshot. <laughs> <coughs> but it's not that. It's not really that. And apparent, this is a homage to the picture of Dorian Gray. But anyways, I'm able to tell you this one because I remember them very, very easily. So Gracie here basically wants to aspire to become a model. And she actually found a scout for the magazine Teen Teens and offered a fan a freaking photo shoot. Then afterwards, she just became more and more and more and more and more into the idea of becoming a star, into a spoiled freaking model. And then they find out that the freaking girl, yeah, the freaking scout actually is the devil who steals souls of any teen girl who wants to be known as the prettiest face in the world. And... Gracie and all the girls on the wall are secretly shallow and stuff like that. And Gracie chose as the new face of Teen Teens. Lexi deleted Gracie's ugly face shot from her phone in an attempt to bring back Gracie back to normal. But sadly, Lexi reveals that Cassandra's right. Gracie had the power all along to walk away from fame, but she didn't do it. And her face now hangs on Cassandra's wall. While her new and permanent face is uglier than the one on her cell phone. You gotta admit that's a big damn, right? This <laughs> is like, you gotta admit that's a big damn. And as you can see, it actually played with the fact of the devil showing up. Never in Goosebumps, they actually had the devil showing up. But in this case, you actually did. Of course, the last but not least one is the one I actually referenced. Freaking Return of Lily D. They knew that they had to hype this freaking damn up, and they sure did. So Lily D, what happened previously is the fact that a freaking street sweeper took her down. So, she basically got saved by Natalie. And Natalie is the sweet girl, and... She actually, there was a few boys who were poking at her, messing with Lily D, dragging her on concrete. But Natalie actually patched her up, made her clean and everything. And it looks like, oh yeah, she took her to the Really You hospital and got her arm fixed. And a doll maker, who I didn't even mention in Really You, but a doll maker actually revealed that Lily D was actually evil. And technically that was one of the ones that she made that she was like, it was corrupted and not good she actually decided she actually revealed that the doll turned nice and she actually brought it back to natalie and the messed up part is that even though lily d is now a nice girl she still is jealous she still actually is able to turn jealous and as soon as natalie found a lonely baby bird and brought it home well lily d had some crap that she had to deal with so <clears throat> so she tried and <laughs> she failed that first time yeah and then it turns out a doll maker yeah doll maker actually revealed that lily d is still bad and she was gonna go and try to save natalie but sadly guess what happened to freaking damn doll maker <laughs> lily d actually took her fishing bowl took natalie's fishing bowl and dropped it on freaking doll maker's head Damn. And Natalie was like, yeah, we're going to get rid of Lily D because apparently she did this crap. <laughs> yeah, so Lily D hid. And then Lily D tries to drown the baby bird in the bathtub. And she also kicked the grandpa down the stairs. <laughs> oh, frick. And then Natalie sees Lily D in a wheelchair, but it turns out to be a lamp. And then the doll is behind her with a freaking damn knife. That's right. Freaking Lily D is freaking legitly gangster about to kill <laughs> oh freak and freaking natalie actually took a frying pan and she fought lily d frying pan with butcher knife that was kind of a good fight that was a good little bit of a little fighting thing right there but anyways natalie took the head off actually she took 
the knife out of the hand of OLED, knocked it off, and then used the frying pan and freaking gave a good serve as if ping pong and hit freaking Lily D's head into a pot of water. And then all of a sudden, the creepy crap of the doll singing, Sleep, baby, sleep, sleep, baby, sleep. Which I was like, okay, that's kind of creepy. I mean, if it's all over, then you shouldn't have to make it creepy as hell. But anyways, <clears throat> Natalie puts the pan on top of the freaking head, which basically means that the doll is dead. Lily D is no more. Yet again, this actually ran very, very long. I'm sorry for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the little rundown that I told you. <clears throat> and please watch all these episodes. Don't take my word for it. Never take my word for it. Well, take my word for it, but never actually just say, I listened to him. I know what happened in the episode. No, 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 no. You have to watch the episode. You have to. And Lily D, the return of Lily D was hyped up so much. What I thought was going to happen with Lily, return of Lily D was just the fact that she wanted revenge on the family who discarded her. Yes, even says right here, the evil doll Lily D from Really You is back and out for revenge on a family who discarded her. But yet, yet, it didn't happen. I figured that Lily D would have turned back to Lily and her family and they're all like, Oh God, no! Oh freaking damn! Oh my gosh, I thought you were gone! Ah! No, that didn't happen. They didn't even show up whatsoever. Yeah, it was basically just L Natalie and her grandfather. The doll maker showed up again. Yeah, the girl lady who played the, the doll maker didn't show up, but Lily D Lily, sorry, Lily and her family never showed up in this whole entire episode, which wasn't really a downer for me. I mean, it really wasn't, but on the other hand, it's still kind of like I wanted to see what Lily D would have done with the family. I mean, the family freaking allowed her to get run over by that thing. So, I would have kind of actually wanted to see her do like the whole usual thing of she cut the brake, she cut the brake, jump out of the car, <laughs> oh, freak, or you know the whole entire shebang of holy freak. Hey, did you hear that? I think there's someone back there, someone in the back seat. It's like, please, there's no one in the back seat. And then when they look, it's Lily D with a knife. Oh, say I'm a big. It's like, yeah, I wanted that. I wanted something like that, but I'm not crying. Well, mostly I would cry. It's just basically, <clears throat> I would only basically cry the fact of Lily D is now gone. She actually will never show up ever again. That was the sad part. Whew, that was really sad. Well, anyways, thank you for watching and stay tuned for season three.